Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Matt Jasmine, Hearing Officer for San Francisco Public Works. Maribel Hansen is the clerk for the hearing. Public Works Bureau of Street Use and Mapping Inspector Shannon Doe will be presenting the order. This hearing is being recorded via Zoom and will be available afterwards through a link on the San Francisco Public Works website, sfpublicworks.org. As this is a virtual meeting, there's no sign-in sheet. So if you'd like to receive information about the results of the hearing, please, please send an email to the address listed in the hearing notice. This hearing is to consider one item. And that is hearing order number 208857. This supersedes hearing order 208709 to consider a request from the property owner at 2095 Chestnut Street for a minor sidewalk encroachment permit to construct and place one new trash enclosure closure, uh, that's four foot by three and a half. Uh, four, four feet, three and a half inches wide and extending out three feet into the public right of way along Steiner Street, uh, fronting the subject property at 2095 Chestnut. This is at Lock 491, Lot 23. Uh, my job as the hearing officer is to gather the facts for the hearing item, listen to all testimony, and to help our director of public works make determinations. I will not be making any decisions today. Instead, I'll, I'll forward my findings for the hearing and make recommendations to the director. The director will make all final determinations. When the director's determinations are made, the department will notify you of them. The hearing will proceed as follows. I'll ask the public work staff to speak first and present the case, then follow with the property owner um, to speak. Then if there are any members of the public or witnesses, appellants who would like to speak. Um, then the department, if need be, will address um, any comments. I'll ask questions if, if I have any. And then we'll have another chance for the property owner or the appellants to uh, make rebuttals. Each speaker will have three minutes to speak. The clerk will monitor time for all speakers. When you hear the first bell, bell that means the speaker has 30 seconds left to speak. If you're part, party to any of the cases visible for one hearing today, I'll call on you to speak. If you'd like to use visual materials in your presentation, please let me know. If you're a member of the public who would like to speak, wait for me to call for public comment and then use the Zoom raise your hand feature. If you're on a computer, get into the queue. And if you're on dialing in by phone, use star nine to join the queue. When it's your turn to speak, I'll call on you. Yeah. You may need to dial star six to unmute yourself. Comments and questions should be addressed to me and not to the department or the applicant. If you cannot finish your comments within the allotted time, you may submit written testimony to me by the end of the hearing. All comments, um, once completed, uh, when they're finished, I'll close the item. No. Before we consider the hearing item um, on the agenda today, I'd like to open up uh, for public comment. Members of the public may address the hearing officers on matters that are within the department's okay. jurisdiction, but not on today's agenda. Are there any comments from the public at this time? Any comments, Clerk Hansen? Okay, seeing no comments, um, we'll close the public comment item and begin the hearing. May I have um, our Public Works BSM Inspector Doe present the order? Yeah. Hello, thank you, Shannon. Is it all right if I share my screen or do you prefer to have it on your side? Go ahead and share your screen, Shannon. Thank you. Okay, great. So my name is Shannon. I'll be presenting on Public Works Order 
about a trash enclosure for 2095 Chestnut Street. Due to ongoing issues at this property with receptacle storage, a site assessment was performed and a recommendation was offered for them to submit an application for us to evaluate. The application was submitted back in March um, this year. The property is a corner property uh, between Steiner and Chestnut Street. You can see a visual here from January 2023. Along Chestnut Street is 20 is 100 linear feet with a 12 feet sidewalk and 25 feet on Steiner with a 15 feet sidewalk. Their proposal is to install and construct a trash enclosure at the tail end of Steiner Street on the top right. You can see it highlighted in red. Be three feet deep, three and a half feet tall, and four to four and a half, four to four and quarter inch um, wide. This is a close-up of the details. You can see the opening is on the side, so it does not protrude even further into the pedestrian right-of-way. The design does comply with our 1025 to not exceed 25% of the width of the sidewalk and 10% of the area of the sidewalk. During the notification process, we did receive an objection from an adjacent property at um, 3352 three, Steiner Street. Um, the objecting property has actually reached out to BSM a couple of times prior to the notification process. The main comments include discrepancy with capacity of trash colored enclosure to fit the allotted space, as well as containing all of the trash receptacles that they have out there. They have also commented on safety concerns, citing a previous fire hazard that has happened, and they generally just have an issue with the location of the trash enclosure, not necessarily the trash enclosure itself. From what I've seen, the permittee and the objecting party has met a couple of times um, to discuss the issues, and the objecting party proposes them to relocate the trash enclosure or have alternate solutions such as a parklet or, as we know now, as shared spaces. Um, from my personal evaluation of the situation, I've highlighted in green possible solutions or alternative, alternative locations to the trash enclosure. One thing to note is on Steiner Street, there is a pretty big vault um, utility that cannot be covered and has to be accessible at all times. So I didn't get details on the dimensions, but depending on that location, um, another location on Steiner may not be viable. The only other option would be along Chestnut Street, where they have probably 100 feet to work with. But with this relocation, they will have to go through the notification process again. Concludes my presentation. If you have some questions or if you want to clarify anything, please let know. Thank you. Um, now, um, may I ask the Ugo um, Clerk Hansen, would we go in this case to the property owner if they're available or straight to the appellant? Oh, you're muted. Uh, I believe that's uh, that's your call. Is the is the property owner available um, to speak on this hearing order? Or business uh, owner. I should yes. say business owner. Excuse me. Yes. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and allow um, Mike Barra, uh, Barrow to speak. You will have uh, Mr. Barrow uh, three minutes to speak and present. Okay, can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. Hi, um, my name is Mike Barrow. Uh, my business partner and I own a very small restaurant in the corner of Steiner and Chestnut. Uh, inside is about 700 square feet. Um, it is a sit-down restaurant. Um, we have um, some tables and chairs outside. Uh, obviously, we need our tables and chairs to get enough money to pay our rent, um, to maximize what we have, uh, especially in this economy that we're in right now in San Francisco. We are proposing a, a small trash enclosure right outside of our entryway for our employees and from the kitchen so they can directly take the trash out without interrupting anybody from um, the inside of the restaurant and the dining room. 
Um, we are proposing a very small trash enclosure. Uh, we would obviously do make it nice and tidy. Um, we have three small uh, trash cans that we would be putting inside of there. Um, we, uh, I, I understand that there were some problems with the, the, the tenants that were in there prior. Uh, they were storing um, their oil drum inside of their garbage can. And obviously we would not be doing that. Uh, they did not have a permit for a trash enclosure. They just put one out there. Um, they did not abide by any of the, the rules in San Francisco. Um, we, um, since then, uh, I've talked to the property owner that has the problem with it. Uh, and, um, Deborah, who, uh, was a consultant. Um, we, um, we are one concern is the problem is I have a lot of pictures that I've sent to our lawyer that is also on this call, um, that their property puts out trash cans at night. Uh, right in front of our restaurant and i have uh, documented night after night um like last night at 6 30 we had i think it was eight trash cans in front of our property and all we're trying to do is put a small trash enclosure that's right there that we tucked in and tidy um and we're dealing with all this trash in front of our restaurant and i'm just having a hard time understanding why you know we're willing to work around with any of their if their trash that they have out front of our restaurant we're just trying to put a small enclosure. We have no room in our restaurant right now. Uh, it's only 20 seats inside. It's very, very small. And we need all the capacity for- You have 30 that. seconds. Okay. Um, that's really all I have. Uh, I'm happy to share the photos. Uh, Roberta Economides, who's on this call, can share them and send them in of what we're dealing with in trash in front of our restaurant right now. I just want to put a small enclosure outside of our kitchen door that we can store our trash. Uh, we get our trash picked up every single day. Um, and that's all I have. Thank you. Um, now we'll open it up for public comments. Sorry. Um, we have um, Salma uh, Lat Latilia. Excuse me if I mispronounce um, that. Can you spell your name? Um, oh, you have it there. I see it. Thank you. And you have uh, three minutes to speak. I've unmuted. Would you like to speak, Ms. Alma? Oops. Hi, I think we're having a technical difficulty. Um, my lawyer is logged in as me, and he actually is the person from the public who wants to speak. So okay. can you just, let me just, I guess I'll have to come to my computer. Just can you wait one second? Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, I'm sorry, can you hear me? Yes. Um, my name is Scott Emblidge. Um, you should have received, and, and can I confirm, Mr. Hearing Officer, that you did receive our letter yesterday explaining the bases for our objections? Yes. Okay, thank you. So, as you know, um, we do not object to a trash enclosure. Um, we understand what Mr. Barrow was saying about a struggling small business. We're sympathetic to that. Um, we're under, we understand why he believes he can't store the trash within his building, but needs to use uh, the public right of way. We understand that. What we object to is the proposed location, which is the worst possible alternative that he has as far as placing a trash enclosure. Um, it is, he's proposing placing it uh, right next to Mr. Salma's building that has both commercial and residential tenants and at a location that has a history of, of uh, a fire uh, that has that endangered both uh, the commercial tenant and the residential tenants, and had not a neighbor seen it right away, could have resulted in the building burning down. 
So um, there's a significant public health and safety risk of placing the uh, proposed bins at that specific location. As we have shown you, and as Ms. Doe showed you, there are plenty of other alternative locations uh, that work for everybody. Uh, uh, they allow this business to have the trash enclosure that it uh, claims that it needs, um, but it does not endanger the health and safety of the neighboring residents. Uh, we're not asking to reduce the income or scale back the, the tables uh, we're simply asking that if the public right of way is going to be used, it be used at a location that works for the neighborhood, um, not just that um, this particular restaurant thinks is the most convenient location for it. So if you look at the diagram on page seven of what we submitted, it shows uh, uh, five different potential locations uh, a, B, A through E, where the uh, trash enclosure could be located. Particularly, if you look at A and B and C, those are locations that would not infringe on adjacent property owners, um, have sufficient room for this enclosure to be placed. Um, and as you can see, because there are no tables at B or C, they wouldn't infringe on the uh, location of the tables that they currently have. If the trash enclosure was located at um, where A is, that table could be relocated, so we would still have the same number of tables and the same income. Uh, uh, and you have uh, 10 seconds. He brought up some issues about trash at our building. We're happy to work with him about uh, any problems he might be having with our tenants, but that's not the issue here. The issue here is, is this location consistent with public health and Thank safety you. and right for the neighborhood? Thank you. Okay, thank you for your comments. So I have a few questions. Uh, first, um, is there any um, relevancy, um, Inspector Doe, to the reason that this is a, there was an original hearing order that was superseded? Is there information contained in the original order that's relevant? I believe it was superseded because the two parties were still um, trying to discuss the issues and trying to resolve it. Understood. Um, my first question then has to do with the um, can, the enclosure size. Um, it was noted in the documents provided by uh, Salma's attorney uh, regarding the, the size of the enclosure for two bins, but I understand you'll likely need you have three and you'll likely need three garbage recycling and compost. Um, where do you plan on storing the third bin? This is a, a question for Mr. Barrow. I'm going to allow Mr. Barrow to speak to answer your question. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes. Uh, we've measured it, how we had it, it, that we could fit them in there into the size of that receptacle that we were proposing. Okay, you should check that. I think um, if you do have three bends, it definitely won't fit in 48 inches wide. So the width of your, your enclosure is going to be a little bit wider than than you're proposing. So I think that might have just been an oversight somewhere. I had it measured the way we put them in there. Um, I'm happy to look again, but in that enclosure, we would go exactly what we have proposed in the uh, on the architect drawings. And one thing, just one last thing, that it is completely on our property line that where we're proposing this is not going into the adjacent property whatsoever. Right. Yeah, I'm not sure if we can share those um, images, um, but that would be a helpful graphic if possible. If not, then we can just move, move ahead. Um, uh, your your graphics do show just two bends inside of a forty eight inch wide enclosure, so um, I think that's um, a mistake of some sort, um, and would likely encroach on your employee entrance adjacent to the kitchen. So just something to think about um, and review with your your architect. Um, my next question is really about um, alternate locations, and I appreciate um, the thought about alternate locations. I can see um, 
and these are just my initial thoughts. It has nothing to do with the recommendation. Um, location A, from a business owner's perspective, could be difficult because it's adjacent to the entry point. B and C are right at the corner, which would make the corner from a, a public use perspective unsightly. I'm wondering about D and E, uh, focusing on IDA, um, location D at Steiner Street. Um, and the question really is um, for Inspector Doe, is there an opportunity to vacate existing parking along Steiner and provide a parklet for additional seating for the business? And if so, could uh, a trash enclosure be incorporated into that parklet? Um, and just a little bit of background on the question. I see an image, um, a photograph taken of the site that does show, um, this comes from the first page of um, Moscone El Inbridge and Rubens letter appeal, uh, appealing the, the application. And it actually does show a parklet adjacent to 3352 Steiner with um, trash enclosures or trash bins adjacent. So um, Inspector Doe, is that an option? Uh, I have never seen it happen and I believe the shared spaces program has specific guidelines that they have to follow. Um, so they can still apply for a parklet or a shared space and get additional seating, um, but Putting a trash enclosure there would be very difficult since it is more permanent than the shared spaces program. And um, the letter to you um, appealing the application is um, location D an option, which is actually at the curb um, along Steiner Street. Yeah. Yeah, we also would like the trash enclosures to be up against the fronting property and facade. So E and D are also not a viable option, given how much it will protrude into the pathway. Okay. Um... Those conclude my questions. Are there any other comments that either the property owner or um, the appellant would like to make? Office, uh, Officer Jasmine, we have um, Deborah, uh, Deborah Holly um, waiting and also um, Roberta um, Economist. Oh, my uh, apologies. So. Um, yeah, let's go to the to the first one that has come on. Okay. They haven't yet yeah, not they haven't spoken yet. So this is Deborah Holly. You have three minutes to speak, Ms. Holly. Good morning. Um, I just wanted to see if I could share my screen to show uh, the slide deck uh, with some additional photos. Um, we had understood there would be an opportunity to uh, share those, but I don't see that as an option on the um, the lower bar of this. Would, excuse me, sorry. You would have to have sent in the uh, slide deck to oh, us prior. Okay, that's that's too bad. That, that was not clear on the um, on the hearing notice. Okay then um, that's really all I have. Thank you. Is there someone else in the queue? Yes, uh, we have Roberta. Economides. Economides, I apologize. Um, you have three minutes to speak, please. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you for your time this morning. I wanted to let you know that we do not have a copy of Mr. Emblidge's letter. So when you were referring to sites A, B, C, and D, uh, I believe Mr. Barrow and I were unable to follow that. He did not provide us with a copy of the letter yesterday before this hearing. That's item number one. Uh, the second item that I want to raise is that Mr. Emblidge stated that this was a significant public safety risk. 
Um, I don't believe that it is it is Mr. Emblidge's place to determine that. This is why we have the fire department. And frankly, I think if we believe that it's a fire risk, then we should leave it to the fire department to determine that. And if they determine that this is not a fire safety hazard, then the trash bin should be allowed. So that is my position on that. The other thing that I'd like to raise is in terms of a solution that works for everybody, anything that's gonna take away seating from the space is not gonna work for everybody. My clients opened up a location in the middle of a dire time for restaurants. And we need to take into account that business owners need to be able to do their business and they need to be able to, to make profits and they need to be able to function. And in order for poppies to do that, they need to have the trash enclosure where it has been proposed. And you know, we need to move forward with that. So, you know, we are requesting that it stay as it is. And if this committee determines that fire and safety need to come out to see whether or not it is a problem, then we believe that's appropriate. And we believe that they'll determine that it is not. Clerk Hansen, is there a way for you to um, share the um, letter that I was referring to with the locations identified? You're muted. Shannon, do you have a copy? I do not have a copy of the letter or any documents. Yeah, let me show you something. Over here. Can everyone see this? And I just note here um, for clarification purposes, you can see the enclosure at the top of the page there should representing just two um, bins inside of it. So, um, and it's obviously, as you described, Mr. Burroughs, um, to the um, north of the property line, um, wedged between the property line and the entrance. So if that um, is indeed um needs to be increased in size then there's a there's a problem there so i'd, I'd love to hear kind of what um what your thoughts about that are sorry could you was that a question towards me uh, Mr. Barros, or um, or your representation, uh, Mr. Barros, you're able to speak. I just got on. Sorry, uh, I'd have to take a look at that. Um, you know, I, I I I promise whatever we would do, we will not go if whatever I have to work with, and whatever I have to do, I have some ideas um, that I could use. Possibly, I need to figure it out, but I would not. What I'm proposing. If it is two cans, it's two cans. I uh, will not go over that scope of the drawing that's done. We will stick to exactly that scope. Are there any additional requests to speak, Clerk Hanson? Yes. Uh, we have um, Yasin Salma. I'm going to go ahead and allow you to speak. And you have uh, 30, um, excuse me, um, three minutes to speak. Hello, uh, my name is Sal Salma. I own the building with my wife. We are retired and uh, we own the building for over 23 years. Uh, the location there does not fit three cans and they know it. And there is tables. I asked them, please put a table over there and I, I'm working with you on that. 
they have on the showing the drawing here they have one table as a matter of fact they have two tables there on Steiner Street I said please remove one of them and put the enclosure they said no it will look bad for our clients we don't want to look at garbage uh, container I said but you are putting it in front of my entryway they did not leave one inch in my entryway and I have eight people living upstairs and we had a fire there before and uh, it was a nightmare. Thanks God we have uh, Pete's coffee. They were there five o'clock in the morning and they stopped the fire. We had a fire. They told me my insurance will take care of it. They did not take care of anything and they left. The current owner when he bought the building, when he bought the business, I'm sorry, he was well aware of this. He was well aware of the fire. He was well aware that he can, they told him that the owner objected after the fire. And he decided he is going to go ahead and do it right next to my entryway of my building. So with regard, uh, yes, they are small business and we are small people. My wife and my daughter, that's our only income. And it's extremely difficult for him, extremely difficult for us too. We are small people too. He can take a table, one of the tables he get right now, it shows one table. But the truth, there is two tables right there. He And he can put two tables there, remove one of the tables and put a table in front of, next to my building. And we'll be good neighbors. Thank you. Are there any other requests to speak for Tansy? Uh Yes, we have um, Lila Salam. I'm gonna go ahead and allow to speak. Go ahead, you have three minutes. Um, yes, this is Scott Emblidge again. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I apologize. I'm on Lila's uh, computer, but I did want to respond to the questions raised by the hearing officer, if I can. Please proceed. Um, three points. First, um, there is no way you can have the three trash receptacles uh, that are that clearly the business does have and fit it at the proposed location. So apart from the health and safety concerns for the neighbors, it's just not workable at that location. As far as alternative locations, and um, if you look at the diagram that's on the screen now, if, you're con if DPW or the hearing officer is concerned about a location of the trash on the corner, it's very easy to accommodate. Just flip the B with the tables to the left of the B, put the tables toward the corner and put the trash receptacle um, uh, where that table is. There's also, as Mr. Salma pointed out, and if you look at page nine of the letter that I sent, um, there is room on the chestnut side as well to put, right, right now there are tables. There are two tables there. Those tables could be slid down. Um, one of the tables could be placed where the trash receptacle is. My point is, there are plenty of ways that Mr. Um, of the Poppy's Restaurant's request can be accommodated that doesn't cause this problem for the neighboring business and that provides uh, enough of an area for to have the three um, bins. And uh, I do apologize to Ms. Economides if she didn't see my letter before, but um, Deborah Holly shared this same diagram uh, with Mr. Barrow previously. So it, it is not as if uh, they were unaware of what we were proposing as alternative locations. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Off Officer Jasmine, we have one more speaker. Uh, Ms. Uh, Econ Economides would like to speak once again. Uh, nope, I take that back. <laughs> she removed her hand. 
Oh, wait, here we go. Sorry. Okay, Ms. Economides, you are um, able to speak. Three, you have three minutes. Thank okay. you. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to make a couple of points. Um, the 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 owner of the the adjacent property said that my clients knew about the fire when they entered into that location. That is not true. They did not know that. Secondly, they have submitted photographs, you know, from the previous tenant, which at the end of the day, they were bad operators. The, the people who are in this space now are some of the best operators in San Francisco. They are some of the cleanest, most conscientious people who run businesses in San Francisco. So I just want to point that out. Um, secondly, some of the locations that they are pointing out, I believe in the last slide that Mr. Eldridge brought up, it appeared that they were pointing to the utility section um, as one of the areas that was workable. Can we go back right there? And it is my understanding that it is unlawful to put a trash enclosure there. And in fact, the previous tenants had the trash enclosure there. And we know that they held oil in that trash enclosure. And again, they were not the operators that we have here. And I don't think that the current good, thoughtful, conscientious San Francisco-based operators should be punished for the behavior of the previous tenants. With respect to some of these other locations, at the end of the day, people don't want to sit next to a trash enclosure. And restaurants are currently struggling. They're struggling to have people come to their spaces. They are struggling to get people out of their homes and onto the streets. And we need to set them up for success. And the truth of the matter is, and I, I understand this, but the, the, the property owner next door simply doesn't want the trash enclosure adjacent to his front door. But because he doesn't want it doesn't mean that my client needs to put it somewhere that's going to harm their business. So again, if we think it's a health and safety issue, then we should have fire come out and determine that. But it's not for the property owner and Mr. Emblidge to determine that. It's for fire and safety to do it. This is the most logical place to do it. They have an architect on board to do it. It will look good. It will be clean. It will comport with the size that we are. 30 saying. seconds. And if, if only two bins fit in there, two bins will go in there. I will guarantee I have worked with th these clients for over a decade. What they represent, they will do, they will do. So, I believe that we need to have the trash enclosure exactly where it's proposed for all of the reasons that Mr. Barrow and I have stated. Thank you. That is three minutes. I think everyone's had a chance to speak at this point, unless there are any new um, parties who would like to speak. Officer Jasmine, there are no new parties unless you are willing to allow others to uh, that have already spoken to uh, speak once again. I think we have um, accommodated all of the rules per the hearing to allow folks to speak twice. Um, so I think we're, we're at the conclusion here. If there are no other comments, then I will close the item um, and now we'll just move into any other comments that are not on the agenda. Um, any other public comments that would like anyone from the public would like to make, um, not regarding this hearing them order. If there are no other comments, Clerk Hansen, I will close the hearing at this point. Just reconfirming, uh, there are no other comments, uh, no new um, speakers are raising their hands. And with that, the hearing is now closed. Thank you all for your participation.